Welcome to iLectures Online, and here we're going to talk about Ampère's Law. Hmm, that's an interesting name, it's Ampère. It's a, it's a French physicist who figured out the relation between currents and Ohm's Law and so forth, and therefore we named the unit of current after him, amps. So what is Ampère's Law? Well, he discovered that if we had, for example, a, uh, a set of currents, in a particular area, let's say three conductors side by side, then they each carry a certain amount of current, I1, I2, and I3. And if we drew a, an imaginary circle around those three currents, what he said was that if we figure out the strength of the magnetic field anywhere along this, this imaginary line, so for example over here the B field might be kind of like this, in that particular area of the curve, and then if we took a little small little line segment along this, and we call that a small little DL, and of course that would means there was a small little angle between them, what he said was if we multiply these two together, for example, if we went B dot DL, which of course, if we want to calculate that, that is equal to the strength of the B field times the length of the little line segment times the cosine of the angle between them like that, and if we did that for every little line segment all the way around the circle like that, and we added all those products up, so we did that time and time again, we found the B field in each, in each particular case, so the B field there would be maybe like this, and like this, and like this. Sometimes the B field would be parallel to each other, uh, or parallel to the, uh, to the line segment DL. If we added up all those products, B dot DL, he figured out, for example, if we summed them all up, and of course summation is an integral sign, if we summed up all the B dot DLs all the way around the circle, he said that that was always equal to the I enclosed multiplied times mu sub naught. And that becomes a very interesting equation. Now in a case like this, where we have multiple current uh, uh, current conductors in there, having different currents, maybe pointing in different directions, that would be kind of a difficult problem to solve. But if it's very symmetric, for example, if we have a single conductor in there, to the example, if we have a single conductor, let's say that I is equal to 5 amps, and we drew a circle around it like this, and we put the conductor right in the very center of that circle, then we know that the B field will be uniform anywhere along that circle. The B field, of course, if you use a right-hand rule, if we point the, the thumb in the direction of the current, let's say the current is upward like this, then we could see that the B field would be perpendicular to that, so in everywhere along the curve, the B field would be exactly perpendicular to that imaginary circle, like so, like so, like so, like so. And since the B field doesn't change, only changes in direction, but it doesn't change in magnitude anywhere along the field, and we can also see that the direction of the B field is always parallel to the direction of the little line segment that we could potentially place there in each case. So we have a little DL there, we have a little DL there, we have a little DL there. In each case, the B field is parallel to the line segment, then this becomes a very practical equation. Because let's say that we make that circle with radius r, and we want to find out what the B field is along that line, let's use um, what we call Ampere's law to do that. So we take the integral of B dot DL, and we say that's equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed. Now, since we know that in each case, the B field direction and the line segment direction will be parallel, and of course B dot DL means B times DL times the cosine of the angle between them, and if the angle between them is zero, the cosine of zero is one, right, this then becomes one, then it's simply the integral of the B field, oh, and then we don't have to put the, uh, the vector notation on there, we can simply say it's B field times DL equals mu initial, or mu uh, sub naught times I enclosed. Okay, so now, since the B field magnitude doesn't change anywhere along that circle, we can take the outside the integral sign, so we can write B times the integral uh, of DL all the way around the circle is equal to mu sub naught times I enclosed. And then, of course, when we take the 
integral all the way around the circle, since it's a circle, the integral of a dl all the way around the circle is simply the circumference of the circle, so we can say that that's equal to b times 2 pi r equals mu sub naught times i enclosed. And then finally, if we then isolate this equation for b, we get b is equal to mu sub naught divided by 2 pi times i enclosed divided by the radius of the circle. And this then becomes the equation you're already familiar with. That is the equation of a B field anywhere outside a current carrying conductor. If, you're, if the current car carrying conductor has current I running through it and your distance R away from the conductor. So you can see that this can be a very practical way of solving problems. So in the next example I'm going to do something a little bit more complicated but again using um, this is an Ampere's law here, we're going to be able to solve that rather easily. All right, so hopefully this will give you some understanding of what Ampere's law is, and let's now go look at an example of how to use it.